learning in games is a very natural and organic process. Now in the education space, that's really exciting because now we're seeing things like Minecraft is now the, the, the playground for this generation. Yeah, I think education um, can sometimes be disengaging for people. So unless you have a genuine interest in, I guess, the material that you're, you're being exposed to, then um, I think that there's not always a lot of motivation for people to learn. Um, so really, I think that that's where the opportunity with games comes, is that they tend to make things more sticky for people. And we can actually use games both as metaphors or examples, but get them playing games um, and talking about their game experience and, and building those things into learning, then it really can be really effective. A lot of students also play these games at home as well, so what you've done is you've taken something from their home life, brought it into the classroom and said, hey, surprise, a lot of higher engagement with students. We also see higher retention within classes as well. Kids are much more likely to want to come back to class. And I found the advantages for me for using games in the classroom was increased engagement from my students. They were more motivated in coming to class. They wanted to participate in the lesson. They were just instinctively sharing with one another, sharing their discoveries, sharing what they had learned, teaching one another how to do things without me asking them to do something like that. And it was just more fun. <laughs> I used Minecraft to look at earth science, so we looked at rocks, the rock cycle. Um, then we ended up using it as a creative tool, so we built the digestive system in there and the students had to label the sections we had been learning about. We built set plant and animal cells and had all the features and organelles we had been learning about inside the model of the cell. And it was great because it was 3D rather than drawing a picture and having it as 2D and the students could sort of explore inside the cell, which you can't really do with a diagram. We weren't afraid to fail within the game environment, whereas they may be afraid to, they were much more afraid of failure in the classroom environment uh, in terms of tests and worksheets and that sort of thing. I'm a big advocate of teachers using off-the-shelf games instead of waiting for the educational game to exist because it may never happen. When I teach regular classes, I sometimes implement games. One of the biggest ones I've used is obviously Minecraft. And I find, again, I find the younger kids, year seven and eight, they really get on board and once, um, once you, you tell them that they're going to be playing, they get excited for the lesson and they really take on the challenge. Um, there's not as much um, mucking around as you might think when you get the kids involved. They actually see it as a, as a good learning tool. So the teacher brings the understanding of learning and the kids bring the technological understanding and that together is the cocktail we really want. One of the games I've been playing is called Never Alone. It's developed by, um, with the help of Inuit from Alaska and it basically illustrates their history in a game format. Because a lot of native peoples, they believe you should not write down their ancestral tale because you would not experience it in a book. But they wholly embrace the idea of making it a game so everyone would take a different experience away with them. What, what we're finding, and, and we've just come from the STEM Video Game Challenge, kids designing games is such a powerful learning experience. They're coming together with future-ready skills of collaboration, mentoring, design, computational thinking, design thinking, um, art, narrative, story making. You know, there are just so many skills being developed in, in, in designing games. And then playing games is part of that. You've got to play a lot of games to understand the mechanics, the atoms that make up a great game. We also use Minecraft as a game development tool, which is absolutely amazing what we can do with that. Kids do Game Maker and so many other different programs. So once they've understood the basics of that, that's when the creativity starts. It's all about teaching the kids about critical thinking and becoming people that can handle 21st century. Um, and, and that's what it's all about. We want them to be able to be team members, think very positively about their future, and see that they can use these skills in any career that they go to. Because let's face it, they're going to be in many different careers in their whole lifetime. I've seen kids that used to be sort of crouched down and quite shy, and then I see them in their humanities class where they've used a game that they've made and they're sitting up straight and tall and the kids are corralling around them, showing them what they've done. So it's been a beautiful, beautiful growth time. 
Yeah, so using games to um, teach code to children is, is very successful. Um, they're very engaged, they love it, um, and as a teacher, being able to um, you know, spark that creative side to them um, is something that's really, really special to see and seeing their faces light up when they have an idea and being able to get them from the start of their idea to the end of their idea and implement their game, they all of, uh, it was their own creation, um, is, is such a great and wonderful experience for both um, you know, the child and myself and being a teacher.